In this video, I will describe some software that I wrote called Neuro Experimenter. This software is free. You can download it at the site listed here. The software runs under Windows 7. It probably runs under Windows 8 and earlier versions of Windows, although it has not been tested there. The purpose of this software is to interface with a device called uh, MindWave, which is produced by a company called NeuroSky and it uh, is an EEG, a consumer grade electroencephalograph, which is to say it measures the brain waves uh, produced by your brain. You can read more about this device uh, at this link. You can buy it there, you can buy it on Amazon. It's uh, reasonably priced under a hundred dollars. My software comes with an extensive user's guide which will discuss uh, more details uh, than I can possibly get into in this video. When you start up the program, you're faced with the parameter uh, page, and I'll describe the parameters now, and along with that, I'll describe how the headset device works. The headset produces uh, brain waves uh, at uh, various frequencies. Uh, these frequencies are given Greek letters, and this is a standard nomenclature. You can look this up on the web. Uh, these uh, Greek letters stand for the frequency at which the uh, waves are produced. The first eight are standard. The next two, attention and meditation, are proprietary uh, data that which is calculated from the uh, other data. Um, and that's also produced in the headset. The headset uh, delivers these uh, ten pieces of data in what is called a sample, and they're all delivered at once, at approximately once a second. So every second you're going to get all of these uh, different frequencies. Now you can select any or all of these to graph, and I'll show you what that looks like. We'll pick uh, just a few of them here. And you can see that when we graph this, we have the uh, option to graph as many seconds as we wish. Five is about right. Uh, we can show uh, the last five seconds or we can show just the last sample. If we just look at the last five seconds, this is what it would look like. Now, you can assume that this device is fitted to your head. It's real light. You hardly notice that it's there. And once you turn it on, it starts generating data, which then uh, talks to this program. And here are an example of a graph that's created. Each uh, wavelength that we've selected, each frequency, rather, that we've selected is, uh, is given a, color, a separate color and uh, is graphed. The data is normalized so that it's between 0 and 1. That's done by uh, my program so that all of these will fit on one graph. You can go back and instead of graphing the last 5 seconds, you can graph the, la graph the last sample and that just looks like this. So we see just the last sample and the height of the uh, block here represents the strength of the signal. Now in addition to graphing you can get audio feedback. The purpose of this audio feedback is so that you can train yourself to generate these uh, different brave wa brain waves. You can pick one of the uh, types that you're graphing to be the one for the audio output. Uh, the type of audio can be just a steady tone or different uh, beats. So let's just pick uh, Delta to uh, get the audio feedback on. And now we'll return to the graph, and you can see that uh, as uh, delta gets larger, the tone will increase in volume and in frequency, or be off if it's hardly generated at all. Now that's the basic idea of uh, the device. That's sort of what it does for you. Uh, the, this program generates the tone, but the device is what's uh, delivering the data to the to the program. Now the program itself is capable of different modes. Uh, right now we've got uh, emulation turned on. Uh, this program doesn't actually need the headset to operate, so if you want to get an idea of what it would be like to play with the program, if you don't have a headset, headset you can download it from my website and play around with it in emulation mode. If you actually have a headset, you click this button and it will start uh, getting the data from the headset and graphing it and playing the tone based upon the data that's being delivered. This 
program makes a log and it can make it in two different formats. Uh, our format I'll talk about. I won't talk about this format at all. But if you have generated some data and you just want to replay the log back, this is sort of like replaying the session that you've already done with a headset. Now I'm going to describe uh, probably the most important feature of this program and that's called uh, this derived formula. Let me describe the kind of an experiment that you might want to do with this software and with a headset. Let's suppose that uh, you're trying to train yourself to produce a certain mental state. Let's uh, suppose that that's uh, relaxation. And let's suppose you want to understand the difference between that state and some active state, let's say uh, reading a book. So what you do is you sit down and maybe spend 10 minutes to maybe a half an hour uh, let's say reading a book and this turn this program on and it will log all the data that's produced and presumably that data represents what an active mind state means. Then you disconnect the headset and you save the log that you've generated and presumably you've generated that log in our format. Now you've got a log that represents an active state of mind reading a book. Next you put the headset back on and you turn the software and the headset on and you try and relax and this could mean you close your eyes, uh, maybe you listen to music, you keep your mind uh, as calm as you can and you do that for between 10 and 30 minutes. Now you've got another log that represents a relaxed state and now your problem is to figure out what the difference between those two states is by analyzing the log, the two logs. Now I'm going to describe one way that you might do that. Uh, a simple way to analyze what's going on is to look at the report. Uh, this report is produced by the software and it tells you uh, during the session that you are in for each um, item, each uh, frequency, what the minimum, maximum, average, and standard deviation happen to be. And if you want to, you can try and figure this out by looking at two different uh, logs and looking at this data. But that's pretty tough to do. I recommend that you uh, download some statistical software and one very good package is called R. Uh, this is a free package. It runs under Windows and uh, runs under all the other operating systems, uh, Apple and uh, Linux. And here's what that looks like. This is a program called R Studio, and I've loaded loaded it with a, a script that I've already written. Now, what you can do is load the log that you've produced into this R Studio uh, program, and so I'll load the first log here. Um, the software that I wrote um, normalizes the data uh, when it's operated on it, so you have to put the data back into normalization form. The log itself is produced with the raw data so you can use it for other purposes. But if you want to use it uh, with my software, you're going to need to renormalize it in the next few lines do that. Uh, this the normalization script uh, is in the user's guide so you can just copy and paste. You don't have to figure that out. And the user's guide also goes into some detail about how the normalization process works. So that's our first log that we've done. And now we're going to go and do the second log Remember, these two logs represent a state of reading a book, and the other one represents a state of relaxation. Now, R is very uh, terse and very capable, and so you could get a summary of the first uh, log in normalization form, and you can see it produces a lot of data for each uh, frequency, and so you can get the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the mean, the third quartile, and the maximum. And you get that for all the data points. You do that for the second log, and maybe you can eyeball that and try and figure out uh, with some difficulty uh, is in terms of what's going on with these two different mind states. But that's pretty tough, too. So let's suppose that you uh, get a uh, an idea that maybe one of the mind states is when the uh, delta frequency is greater than the theta frequency. 
and you're going to see if that's true in uh, one of the logs, and then going to ask if is it true in the second log, and what is the difference, at least in terms of this relationship between the two logs, and therefore between the two mind states. So when you do that, you get two numbers, and they look like this. This says that 61% of the time, as far as the first log is concerned, uh, the delta frequency in amplitude or in strength was larger than the theta frequency. And in the second log, it was only uh, larger 50% of the time. And so you might conclude that this is a uh, kind of a functional definition between the two mind states, if you, if you think that this is significant. Now, you could do statistical tests to find out if this is significant. And in this simple example, let's suppose this is the one thing that characterizes the difference between the, these two mind states. Presumably there's going to be more relationships that are important than just this, but this illustrates what I want to do. So you go back into the program now and you fill in this derived formula. In this particular case, all we're asking is that uh, delta be larger than theta and you write that like this. Now this expression can be as complicated as you want and can be nested and it's uh, fairly capable. And what you're going to do now is you're going to replay both logs through this uh, derived formula and you're going to get a new uh, wave form, if you like, called derived and we'll graph that as well. And you do that in, and maybe turn the tone on and then you just do this for the two logs and this is our log and we connect and now it's just like playing the headset, uh, putting the headset on and, and, and doing the, um, the uh, mind state, except that we're replaying a log instead. And here is the derived data, uh, which is uh, just about zero for this particular uh, log. Let's see if the uh, graph tells us anything differently. Let's see here. Let's uh, go into here. And the graph is sitting here at zero. And that just means that for uh, this particular log, this particular formula is not true. Delta is not bigger than theta for any of the samples that we uh, seem to be playing. Then you do that for, you repeat the uh, experiment for the second log and see if uh, that really gives you anything uh, differently. Now our statistical analysis would assure us that in fact these two graphs would look different. And now what you've done, if this really works, is you've characterized, let's say, the relaxation state uh, means that delta must be bigger than theta. So what you do is you go back and you uh, cease playing the log, and now you put the headset on, and now you leave uh, this formula intact, and maybe you don't really care about these other things, but maybe uh, since we're comparing delta and theta, we, are, we care about that and you put the headset on and now you're trying to train yourself into producing this mind state and the audio feedback will tell you when the strength of this of these two well actually of this uh, formula which is either zero or one because this is a boolean and returns either zero or one so the tone's going to be either on or off and there's ways to make this tone vary based upon uh, the strength of delta rather than just the single boolean value that delta is bigger than uh, theta, and the user's guide gives you an extensive example and goes into that, and then it's uh, pretty easy to do. So you put the headset on, you um, connect to the device, you sit down, you relax, and then you get uh, the output. And here you can see that now we're, this, because this is random data, now we're getting some uh, differences with the uh, formula. The red is the derived formula. If we go back here and we turn the audio on, and we go back to the graph, uh, we'll get audio feedback now, which, because I have the audio muted, isn't, uh, isn't playing. But presumably you'd be listening to the tone, and you would... Uh, be trying to produce the tone, and as you got better at producing the tone, you would find yourself more relaxed, and then you have trained yourself into making this relaxed state uh, anytime you want. That's the theory anyway. Now, people have done experiments with 
neurofeedback, and they've done things like this, and they've characterized various uh, states, mind states uh, like this. And you can experiment uh, with that sort of thing and, and uh, do it yourself. Uh, what kind of success you'll have, I don't know, and I'm not making any claims that this will actually train you to do anything at all, but it is a real valid kind of a, a field that people are looking at. The hardware is uh, very capable. You can read uh, reviews of it, and because you can analyze the two different uh, states and put in virtually any kind of a formula you want in here, you can pretty well characterize a mind state uh, with this formula, and then you can get the feedback uh, that you're looking for. So that's the end of my story. Feel free to download the software. Uh, my uh, email address is in the user's guide. You can read the user's guide online. You can download that. You can play with the software even before you buy a device. And if you like it and you think it might be fun, uh, you can acquire the device. Uh, thank you for your attention.